How long have you been in this office? I've been in this office 12 years. I was the first doctor to come into this building. The frustrating part of my day is I have two employees that work nearly full time fighting Medicare and other insurance carriers for work that I have done. I absolutely detest that part of my life. I never imagined that I would do work and then have to fight a third party to get paid for the work that I do. So that part is particularly miserable. We're also being portrayed very poorly by the media, or we have been in the past. And now we have to fight the government. I mean, I never imagined that I would have to become politically active to take good care of my patients. And so that's added a whole other element to the, to the life of being a doctor. I took Medicaid until about four years ago. Medicaid paid none of their bills in my office for 18 months. And every single registered letter that we sent them came back saying that they had had problems with their computer. And that was why they could not pay my bills. So at the 18th month, I gave up and said, we can't do this anymore. Their reimbursement, as I mentioned earlier, is so low that I would have to see nearly 20 patients an hour to make any kind of reasonable reimbursement on it. In our community, with decreasing reimbursement, many of the primary care physicians have gotten off of Medicare. I don't actually know anyone who is taking Medicaid. Medicaid in Georgia reimburses about $30 for an office visit, and my overhead costs about $350 an hour before I take a penny out the door. So we would be looking at trying to see 20 patients an hour if we took Medicaid. So because so many physicians are getting off of these insurances, it's very hard to find places to send the patients. So a lot of our Medicare patients are having to go to the emergency room. Um, I feel a great deal of anger. And when I look outside of myself and I look at the rest of the country, I'm very worried about the country. If a person who has $350,000 worth of education and 17 diplomas can't afford a 1,500 square foot office, what does that tell the young people in our country about education? I mean, when I was growing up, we believed that if you really worked hard and got a great education, that you would have a really good life in America. And I think what I'm experiencing personally is happening all over America. And I really worry for my young stepdaughters because I don't know that I'll be able to tell them, work hard and get a great education. You know, this is America, you're gonna be prosperous. I'm, I'm concerned about the bigger picture, not just myself. Why do you continue to practice, given all that's happened in the last year to your profession? I love it. I love being a urologist. I stayed in school until I was 32 years old. And also, every day when I get in my car and go home, I can think of at least five to 10 people that I have really helped. And so many people don't get that out of their job. So I will probably continue to try to do it until it's no longer economically feasible.